inshallah and peace be upon the best of Allah's creations and dearest messenger, the beloved and the chosen Abul Qasim Muhammad and his household. I am Sheikh Salman Al Mawla. I'm from a village called uh, Sahel uh, Al Labwa. It's an area between Al Labwa and Harbata villages in northern Bekaa. I'm originally from southern Lebanon. I grew up and was raised in a conservative family. And my from parents, I was nurtured with the love of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them all. And may Allah send mercy on the poet who said, May Allah send mercy upon my mother who drank the love of Ahlul Bayt and fed me through her milk. And I had a father who loved Abel Hassan. And because of both my parents, I loved Abel Hassan. I was raised on the love of Muhammad and his household, peace be upon them, and uh, grew up on this track. And this love grew in me till the age of puberty. And since the age of puberty, I started to realize the true meaning of uh, Imam al Hussein, the true meaning of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Especially that the Prophet made that link between Imam Hussein and his holy name, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and between Imam Ali bin Abi Talib and himself, and between Sayyida Fatima al Zahra and himself, and between the other impeccable Imams, peace be upon him and himself. And precisely when he, the Prophet, peace be upon him, determined that himself and them are originated from the same light and that his family starts with a Muhammad, mid with a Muhammad and ends with a Muhammad and all of them are from the same light and they are the only door which leads to Allah. I grew up and this and their greatness grew in me and as I grew older in age of my certainty and belief grew larger in Allah and his prophet and the household and especially when I was as a youth I recognized the greatness of the school of Muhammad which uh, only graduates uh, good people and the people who believed and who renovated and who hated all of the titles of injustice and corpor corruption and who fully and completely lived this humanitarian life. And uh, as a matter of fact, I was raised since I was young in a family that uh, loved uh, Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them and uh, followed them as an example and walked on the track that Prophet and after him the Imam Ali and Ahlul Bayt, the 12 Imams had drawn. I was raised in this Ahlul Bayt loving atmosphere and naturally there is a way for every human uh, to express his love to someone and in front of the greatness of Muhammad's school, peace be upon Muhammad and his household, in front of this supreme status that Allah gave them, uh, a human uh, could stand, a human who has all loving qualities, the qualities that was raised on true humanity and dedication to Allah and his messenger so that he will know and he will be aware that this is the only path in order to come through life on Resurrection Day. Getting on this ship which will anchor safely or will anchor on a safe anchorage and the great mercy of Allah is Muhammad and his household, peace be upon them. When I finished my scholar degree I took architecture as a major, which is a practical major, or shall I call it topography, specifically in the major of resistance de matériaux, resistance of materials. And uh, the more I went deeply into it, the more I found secrets of God's creation in every human and in every work. I didn't find a way that my heart felt comfortable with and that my mind and thoughts were assured to other than the path of Allah, which I totally believe in, 
the way of Allah, the path to Allah, are Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. So I felt everything. I left my job. I left all what I was doing concerning this uh, academic study. And I headed as a small student who started from A, if I can express myself in that way, from the level zero to serve Ahl al-Bayt. I started to get knowledge about Ahl al-Bayt and get influenced by their knowledge, which was left to us by the Supreme Commander and the greatest, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. who put this tradition for us and then followed by the Imams, peace be upon them, I started to take knowledge from their huge sea of knowledge and went deeper in the doctrine of Allah. And our Imam al-Sadiq, who is the leader, once wished that the whole Ummah would go deeper in the Islamic knowledge. I started my knowledge because eventually I'm a Muslim, a believer in Allah and His Messenger and in Ahl al-Bayt. We ask for Al-Akhirah's life, and those who ask uh, for Allah's sublimate mercy and for the acceptance of the Messenger of Allah and the Twelve Zimam will surely turn a blind eye on the ruins of this dunya, not caring for these ruins and will resolve for the safety shelter of Allah's mercy and to the rescue ship of Ahlul Bayt. So my serving for Ahlul Bayt started since these moments. I started to educate myself I started to persist, to be persistent and hardworking to reach this sacred uh, restaurant, the restaurant of the Master of Martyrs, peace be upon him. Since he was great title in the eye of Allah and in the eye of the Messenger of Allah and Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them all, I started with a systematic method, a systematic study, in order to reach what I'm in right now, with the blessing of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. There is no doubt and suspicion that when a human being is nurtured on the hand of parents who love Ahl al-Bayt and especially the master of martyrs, Imam Abu Abdullah al Hussein, this baby will be fed by those birds arise and grow on the love of Ahl al-Bayt. And this love will increase because if I shall say in the expression of Imam al-Sadiq that we are need with the virtuous mud of Ahlul Bayt and with the water of the wilaya, peace be upon them. So this love is innermost our heart and what helped me in guiding and directing to reach these levels and the suitable atmosphere, the surrounding atmosphere, the loved ones, the area, the city and the lovers and what enhances your insistence on clinging to this religion and to the correct doctrine and to the path of Muhammad, Ali and Fatima, Hassan and Hussein is the righteousness that you touch. And this righteousness that you see, the ordering to kindness and forbidding the denier and seeing the exact and precise nature of human beings, you will see them in their clear and true images, in their dedication and with all what it holds of spiritual and peaceful meanings. which are granulated by Allah and His Messenger and by all people. The principles of Karbala and the talkings about the values of Karbala is a great question and a sore speech. And as a matter of fact, for me and for any human, it doesn't matter how well his knowledge was, he will never recognize the dimensions of the biography of the Master of Martyrs, peace be upon him, and his household. This great value that no one can know but Allah and the Messenger of Allah, Imam Ali and the impeccable Imams, peace be upon them all. The idea of this rank and this great sophistication, which was organized by Allah, 
or which he gave to Ahlul Bayt is conceivable. It's something beyond and beyond all meanings. But the clay that we were built with and the creation that we were created withholds a kind of plain preparation to know this Muhammadi and Husseini greatness. But still we stand astonished in front of this huge greatness of Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them. Karbala. And according to my knowledge of the dear and um, beloved, I was paying some attention to Bulus Salam, the loyal and lover of Ahlul Bayt. And one of his sons told me that whenever Muharram's Hilal enters visible, he enters to find his father crying in his room. And when he, he asked him about it, he explains that the sensation of the suffering of Imam Hussein added to the greatness of the Imam is indeed a huge disaster which may cause everything to suffer the trees, the stones, the, the humans, and so on. You may pay attention, Jean Jacques Rousseau, the Orientalist, and Voltaire, and uh, uh, Georges Jordaev. Uh, who also wrote about Imam Ali, Imam Hussein al bayt peace be upon him. You will find that the person who is your brother in human and not a religion, who has his own religion, we have our own, but you find him that he is a worthy human with his thoughts, his manners, and his way of dealing with others. He loves this great character which left a trace in everyone because the Imam wanted to fulfill the rights and to repeal and fight the falsehood. While the devotion that occurred in Karbala and which was a great turning point left a trace in the soul of all of us, even in the souls of those who recently got interested to master of martyrs, Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, they stand in front of the greatness of that figure which presented the means of selflessness, the manners of the Prophet which presented all the meanings of humanity, which rejected the injustice, which rejected the slavery, rejected the ruins of dunya, and hanged on to that divine love. And this was presented in the quotation for Imam al Hussein. <laughs> recommended all the prophets Adam, Nuh, Isa, Musa, little prophet Abraham and all the prophets except prophet Muhammad. Allah addressed him in so many stories, in many holy hadiths, even in the Quran verses. Allah specialized him and connected the pleasing of himself with the pleasing of prophet Muhammad and Allah prayed upon him and ordered the worshippers to pray upon him to show the greatness of prophet Muhammad. If I was entitled 
and called to be a Mu'ali and a lover to Rasulullah and his household, I should become a role model. Since, as a matter of fact, if I love them, my love should be reflected on my attitude and not just by declaring love. Since there is two kinds of a, a verbal love, and that is not the most important and not effective, and there is a verbal and actual love. I love God. Thus, I should pray. I, I do what Allah ordered me to do. I would search for everything that may please Allah and actually do it. And there is a verbal and actual love. The greatest thing that I could find is the Husseini declamation. And to be able someday to become a preacher and not stand on a restaurant, which was used before by great people. The great people, how we follow as examples. From Prophet Muhammad and his house will peace be upon him. Tell the scholars and the believers to every human who ever loved Muhammad and his household. At the time of Imam as Sadiq, and between parentheses, as an example of the greatness of uh, people who stand on this uh, rostrum, someone came to the majlis of Al Imam. And he checked to know where Al-Imam sits to see the features of the Imam while being sad on his grandfather, Imam al Hussein, And this riwayah may be in the days of Muharram. <coughs> he did that for three consecutive nights. He couldn't find the Imam. And when he came on the daytime to the Imam, he told him he came every night to the masjid, but couldn't find him. So the Imam asked the man if he could remember stumbling upon a black robe every time he enters the majlis on the door. The man said that he did. So the Imam said that he sits right there. The Imam asked why the Imam sits in the door where he can sit inside. Al Imam said that how can I sit in cell while his grandfather Rasulullah Imam Al Ali and As Sayyid of Fatima Zahra are sitting there? And in front of the greatest of this blessed majlis, which is in the stories of Al Bayt are revived, titled by Imam Al Hussein, peace be upon them all, it was my dream and a dream of every believer to be someday in the position of serving the master of martyrs and to stand on the sacred restaurant which should, which should hold the great symbolism in the eye of Allah and the Prophet. Since the sacred platform is not just for crying and wailing, but it is the platform that Imam al Hussein wanted to revive the rituals of Allah to revive the recalling of Allah, to preach, to order for wellness. <clears throat> and this platform is for asking for renovation and for preaching. And as usually mentioned, for praying to lift the... Um, to lift the sorrow from the Ummah, which is the result of the corruption and dark pains caused by this life, and of the bitterness and the uh, ruins of dunya life and its effect on creatures. Our followers are needed with our virtuous mud and with the waters of the wilaya. They joy for our joy and they grieve for our grief. And as a matter of a fact, and since I was um, honored, and I ask Allah to be a speck on the foot of the servants of the masters of martyrs. I was honored to serve this proper path, this Muhammadi path, and to serve the master of martyrs. There is no doubt that the grief of Ahlul Bayt is our grief and their suffering is indeed our suffering and this and their war is ours and their peace is ours and this is a promise that we always declare we renew this promise everywhere and every time in addition to that we revive Sirat Ahl al-Bayt with joy in the birthday of the Prophet in the birthday of Imam Ali as Sayyidah Zahra and the 12 Imams since they are the only door to reach Allah there would never be uh, majlis where Ahlul Bayt are mentioned. Uh, 
um, and Allah would not be mentioned too. Allah would be thanked, praised, and mentioned, thanking Allah for great virtue that He graced the worshippers with, by the birth of the Savior, by the birth of an Imam who should be obeyed in order to reach the mercy of Allah. It's never easy for anyone, no matter how good knowledge he has, to write poetry about Ahlul Bayt or to demonstrate the status of Ahlul Bayt or the suffering of Ahlul Bayt or to show the great position that Allah gave them. There is no doubt that the, uh, the, the poet who writes such a poem should be educated poetry, education in poetry, in addition to the Islamic education which can help him know the Muhammadi seerah and the seerah of all the Imams, peace be upon them all. The writer should have full knowledge of Ahlul Bayt and knows who Ahlul Bayt truly are before writing a poem about them and that requires a huge period of period of time of education in order to reach these few words that can describe those great people. And as said, the best words are those which are few and able to fully demonstrate that. That with the two lines of poetry you can describe the prophet and his greatness. That with the two lines of poetry you can describe Imam Ali and his greatness. And likewise for Ahlul Bayt and the impeccable Imam, peace be upon them. And that is not easy at all. And in addition to that, the speaker should know what poem to choose. And that when he stands on the restaurant, and it is not a normal restaurant, it's a sacred restaurant which was made to serve Allah and His Messenger by preaching the worshippers of Allah and the speakers should choose the best poem and the outstanding poem and the clear poem and the easy but deep poem the poem that converts the best of what a poet can say and write the poem should deserve to be said about the Holy Prophet while knowing that there will um, never be a human description on earth that could uh, fully describe the Prophet and his household, peace be upon them. And every Prophet will always be not giving them their rights no matter how much he writes and no matter how skilled he gets in serving al Bayt, peace be upon them. When I get asked to talk about al Bayt, it is rational, but it, no, it's, it's normal for me to choose the poem which shows the beauty of the love of al Bayt. We always love Ahlul Bayt, and someone may love Ahlul Bayt, but this love can always be different between someone and someone else. And the poem that I always choose should contain deep meanings, and the word should be equal to ten other words on the contrary. So the word should be deep in meaning, uh, melodious, and generous with feelings and on the other hand there might be ten other words with no use and no meanings I choose the poem that is rhetoric first and uh, it should fully describe and a Quranic description or a clarified chronic description so that it describes the true status of Ahlul Bayt. Not an imaginary description. Describe Ahlul Bayt with what Allah described in, in His holy book. The poem should be easy, should be deep, it should be a figurative poem and should reflect the pleasure and the love of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them.
One of the graces that Allah gave us is the following of Ahlul Bayt. And I succeeded to become a servant for Al Hussein and his family. and a servant for his servants, and to become with all modesty a speaker, and I asked Allah to accept us with that description. I had a dream for this journey to continue, and all what I got from knowledge and power, especially with what concerns the Husayni speech, should continue, and this should not stop after my death or the death of anyone. So I started uh, to see what should be done after this period of time, the present time which I'm living in right now. So I started the idea of uh, creating a Quranic uh, Husseini school. Why Quranic and Husseini? Since we are applying what the Prophet said by leaving for us the Quran and Ahl al-Bayt and by holding on to both we shall never get into deception no believer should ever think that if holding on to the Quran and Ahl al-Bayt can lead you to fall one day uh, on the day of resurrection if he is holding on to them and working as they are ordered to he will succeed on that day. Since the speaking Quran is Ahl al-Bayt and the signed Quran is the Holy Book and they shall not be separated. This idea was to revive the memory of Ahl al-Bayt and is, it's hard and it's, it's continuing this, uh, this Muhammadi serving till the day of resurrection. This school was established since the period of time and some of my beloved uh, ones and me worked on, on it. Those who believed in Allah and His Messenger and who had the same orientation and the same Quranic and Muhammad Husseini love. We established this school and we started from almost two years ago. We established it earlier, I think. But the true work started two years ago and what slowed us down were some financial issues. Allah helped us with some people who stood by us and helped us so that the school started and grew and is now in renovating stage and uh, and day by day it will become better and better with the blessing of the Quran and the blessing of Al Hussein and the blessing of the true believers who walked next to us to achieve what we wanted. The school gives classes in the morning to help kids memorize. Those kids uh, were, are in the age of all kinds of knowledge, especially the Holy Quran. And Allah shall make a heart full of Quran. And Allah shall not make a heart full of Quran suffer. That is what the Prophet said. When someone teaches his kid the Quran or walks uh, on the path of the Quran, he shall come on a day of resurrection and on his head uh, and his parents a crown of light. And uh, that is what the Prophet expressed. And the Imam Ali asked us to always read Quran. All this Muhammadi, Alawi, Fatima, Hassani, Hassani paths will end up in the same place which is to preserve both the speaking and the silent Qur'an, who are the holy book uh, and Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. We started by, mashallah, with memorizing the Qur'an and the lessons and manners that are in it. And we linked it to Husseini students who wanted to continue on the path of serving Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, by teaching them as a reciting and the art of speech and the art of performance. In addition to that, we give uh, studies in Islamic uh, Sharia and the Hawza. With the blessing of Ahl al-Bayt, we reached 
today the level that we can teach young kids the manners of the Prophet, which are the manners of the Quran, and teach them the meanings of the Quran and lessons that can be taken from the Hussein school in order for them to be safe on the day of resurrection. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 